Welcome to this episode of Extravagant Generosity, where we talk about the ways in which the practice of generosity impacts our communities, touches our hearts, and works for a more just world. My name is Andrew Warner, Generosity Outreach Officer for the National Setting of the United Church of Christ. Many congregations, certainly most congregations in the United Church of Christ, hold an annual stewardship drive or a pledge campaign. Typically, this takes place in the fall, although some congregations hold a spring campaign. Regardless, the practice of generosity requires more than just a few weekends clumped together in one season. Through the Extravagant Generosity video series, I'll share with you the ideas, concepts, and practical suggestions that you can use throughout the year. Today, I want to talk to you about something that fundraisers call the cycle of donor engagement. Now, typically in the United Church of Christ, we talk about members and membership. But in this series, I'll use the language of donors. Now, many of your donors will already be members of your congregation, but not everyone who gives to your congregation belongs to it, and not every member makes a donation. I want to think about the many ways we engage people who are working on that spiritual practice of generosity, our members. There are a number of ways to name the activities that make up the cycle of donor engagement, but I think of four basic aspects. Identify, listen, ask, disciple. Identify. This step begins with the question, who loves our congregation? Usually this will be the people who regularly participate in your church, but every congregation has people who care about your ministry, even though they're not there on Sunday morning or in any of your activities. When I served as a local church pastor, my congregation received significant gifts from a neighbor who appreciated our work in the community, a philanthropist who wanted to strengthen our progressive Christian voice, and people whose families were touched by our ministry. So begin with this question, who loves our church? And then listen. What is that person or family's mission in life? What kind of legacy do they want to leave? What is their motivation? When you've identified people who love your congregation, seek out their advice about the mission and ministry of your church. Listen to the ways their heartfelt commitments align with the way that your congregation changes lives. After identify and listen, we come to ask. Asking takes up the smallest part of the donor engagement cycle, and yet I find that it produces the greatest anxiety with our volunteers and leaders. And yet, really when, what we're doing when we ask is we're giving an invitation for someone to join us in something that deeply matters for our own spiritual life. In an annual campaign, we generally make a public ask of the whole community. We stand before the community, or we write them in communications and in letters and say, can you join me in making a commitment to this life-changing community? And ask is an invitation, it's an opportunity that we share with people we deeply care about. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, we come to disciple. What happens after an ask or a pledge or a gift? I see generosity as a spiritual practice, so I want to find ways to continue to engage people after their commitment. At its most basic level, this means thanking them, but more deeply, it means finding a way to engage them in the work they care about, sharing with them the impact of their gift, helping them celebrate their joy at giving, helping them find ways to engage new people in their work. Does your congregation treat pledging and giving as the end goal of your campaign? When people make a pledge, do you say, now our work is done? Or do you see it as the beginning of someone's discipleship and really the beginning of your work of engaging your donors? Every staff member, lay leader, and stewardship volunteer can play a role in the cycle of donor engagement. I encourage you to think about the overall scope of your, the year in your church and then wonder when you can play a role in one of these four stages. How can you identify who loves your congregation how do you listen to people's heartfelt commitments? How do you ask people to make a gift or a pledge or a commitment? How do you continue to 
disciple people as they grow spiritually as generous people.